Good afternoon, everyone. Markets tumble after Beijing suspends U.S. agri-imports, ordering China state-run importers stop anything from America. Interesting, though, how their corn crops decimated by army worms and Chinese duck farmers becoming overnight millionaires as half of China's pigs are culled due to the swine flu tripling prices for duck. Nice substitute The new quest for proteins, insects for animal feed, but we've seen that in the media. Insects for you, the humans too. Russia slashing its wheat exports, 6.2 million tons. Canadian wheat crop cut by 5%. American corn so behind that the USDA will definitely have to update their forecast here August 12th, which means one thing, up and up food prices. So how prepared are you for emergency situations or escalating food prices. My Patriot Supply two-week grab-and-go food crate, 92 servings, or the full month four-week supply, 252 servings. The link's in the description box below. Give yourself the peace of mind in case something happens. You know you have long-term food storage and nutrition at your fingertips. The distraction story of the week, markets tumble after Beijing suspends U.S. agri-imports. Beijing has ordered all China state-run agricultural firms to suspend anything that is American farm good related. And this poses an interesting question. You know, China just lost 35% of its corn crop. Swine flus decimated the pigs. Agriculture in general is down due to the grand solar minimum losses in Heilongjiang in the northern part of China. Where are they going to get all this food from? They rely on the United States as a major food importer. I know they haven't stockpiled that much. Even state media reporting on they're just at the cusp of carryover stocks to get through this year. But an interesting factoid, Chinese duck farmers become overnight millionaires. Half of the pigs in China, gone. It's actually more It's around 70%. And if you look at what China just brought in this last month, pork imports because they can't even raise enough pigs in the country. And then look at the prices, 62% increase over last year. Duck farmers quacking all the way to the bank for 2019. Total herd losses exceed 50% in China of all the pigs. Expect the demand for ducks to soar is an understatement. Prices here nearly tripling. I guess it's a good time to be a duck farmer in China. The image here in Jiaxing in Zhejiang province. And I've also seen reports where pig farmers decimated by the swine flu, they can't bring pigs back into that same area for three years. So the government's offering them capital and startup loans if they install fish farms. So it In my opinion, China is definitely going for smaller animal proteins now. Fish, ducks, chickens, forget the pigs, anything big, it's gone. They're looking for more bang for the buck and a faster raise on what they can produce into the stores for protein. And then looking through possible feed sources here, the quest for new proteins, insects for animal feed, fast growth for insects for feed market, $267 million dollars. And that was in 2018. And then we jump right to 2019. Insect meal, good for birds and eggs. So they're definitely trying to push over to insect proteins versus imports. So when you see the insect farms in China being funded by the state, it seems that's the transition point here. So you yourself into the grand solar minimum, what's your transition point for the substitution crop? Insect, 20 million grant from the European Commission and 3.7 billion euros to build out their facilities for insect production. 3.5 million euro insect project as well. This is the Netherlands coming in, taking some insect management course. Also aquafeed coming back right to what the Chinese are doing. Fish farms replacing pork production. It seems this is going to be the play as we move forward. Everybody's kind of understanding these cows and pigs. They're taking up too much space, too much feed in a limited grain yield world that we're stepping into. So you can already see the transition. Jumping over to agri-census, wheat exports cut, corn exports cut, French corn down. Causes are the drought. 
And taking a look at some exact numbers here, the corn crop got crushed from 75% down to 67% in good condition, wilting, dehydration. And the entire country's corn production is going to be cut 2 million metric tons. But we saw the same thing over in Bulgaria and Romania. Their production is going to be cut 30%. And those are the top two producing regions in the EU for corn. We've got the U.S. down to record low levels. China down to record low levels. So where's China going to import all their food from? They're trying to pretend like it's some trade war with America. But America has the most food to sell them. This is becoming absurd in the news. It's nothing more than a distraction. And jumping over to Russia, wheat, they're going to slash their export 6.2 million tons. Keeping it internally, what do the Russians know about the grand solar minimum? Oh, maybe Dr. Abudzimatov and Valentina Zarkova could give a little look there as to what's to happen, as well as the Pokovo Observatory. And it seems that the Russians are well aware of the intensifying grand solar minimum. And right along with the bad conditions across North America, Canadian wheat crops slashed by 5%. Jumping back to American corn, silking. Do you like the color red? Look at the red line right in the middle. Happy, prosperous red in the Chinese culture. Bad for America. That red line means lowest silking progress since 1938. Nice. Do you think the USDA is going to have to update their forecast in the bogus numbers they put out in June? Do you think prices are going to rise for your food staples? These are just common sense questions. U.S. corn conditions, harmonious red. Do you like red? Take a look at the red line. That's where U.S. corn production is. And somehow it's not making the media. But then all these other side stories are talking about switching to insect proteins, smaller animals for protein. But why don't we put some numbers on that? Because graphs are one thing, numbers are another. 42% of the crop will not be mature by September 28th. 42%. That's almost half of the American corn crop. And China lost 35% of their corn crop. Where is the food going to come from? Yeah, you can make ethanol from wheat. Yeah, you can try to switch crops. And they even talk about in the article, if October there's an early freeze, which by all accounts there should be due to the intensifying grand solar minimum and the weather patterns we're seeing stacking up for the third year in a row, it will be an early freeze. And finally, the USDA comes out and says, oh, our June report did not reflect the actual conditions in the field, meaning we lied or we put out a bogus report due to pressure from somebody else so we won't spook the markets and we won't spook you, the American public and the global public, that your food prices are going to rise indefinitely from this year forward. But don't worry, they're going to put out solid numbers this report, right? You can trust the USDA now. That's why I have to come out and write a book and put out my own corn report and put out presentations about the true state of our climate going into this grand solar minimum. Climate revolution, understand, prepare, adapt, and thrive. Links in the description box below. And I wish you the best of luck in your preparations because our governments across this planet are not telling us and they're distracting us with these absurd media headlines. And it seems that opposing powers are complicit to keep both of their societies in the dark.